assalamu alaikum student and friend today is basically the part b which is a continuation of the amines lecture uh, in today's lecture we will cover synthesis of amines and reactions of amines in this lecture synthesis of amines consist of uh, we can try to cover the nucleophilic substitution reaction by which we can synthesize amine alkylation of azide ion followed by reduction and then we have gabriel synthesis of primary amines preparation of aromatic amines by reduction of nitro compounds preparation of primary secondary and tertiary amines through reductive amination and then we have preparation of primary and secondary and tertiary amines through reduction of nitride of zyme and amides then we have preparation of so primary amine by hoffman and then curtius we arrangement these are basically the topic which we have to cover in synthesis of amines let's move on the the first reaction is basically an example of uh, a nucleophilic substitution by molecular reaction which is known as basically the alkylation of ammonia means when we react ammonia with alkyl halide we have basically the alkyl ammonium halide which on hydrolysis in basic medium to yield alkyl amine we use in this reaction the excess of ammonia why we use the excess of ammonia i will tell you after completion of the mechanism of this reaction first see the mechanism let's see if ammonia uh, containing the lone pair act as a nucleophile which attack on the positive center of the alkyl halide which results in the elimination of the halide ion and to give you give the corresponding alkyl ammonium now uh, excess ammonia will abstract the proton to give you the alkyl amine here in the case of ethane amine and the ammonium ion in the next step this ethane amine further react with ethyl bromide to give you the diethyl ammonium and bromide and so on this reaction will continue now here you see in the example if we have basically a substituted acid and you react with basically it's an acid and a halide as well and one if we molar we react with the 70 mole of the ammonia we have basically the control product and this is in a minor example now i ask uh, a question in the first step that we use excess of ammonia using the excess of ammonia actually ensures uh, that all the halo alkane molecule react with the ammonia before having the chance to react with the any amine product as you can see here the ammonia is basically attacking the halo alkane because it is a lone pair and it is a nucleophile the amine produced also has a lone pair like in this case we have uh, so it can also attack a halo alkanes this leads to the formation of substituted amine now as i told you earlier as well using excess of ammonia has to minimize the multiple alkylation as well this is a very important point you should keep remember now next move the to the next reaction which is basically the alkylation of azide ion followed by reduction now in this case you can see i'm just i'm not uh, discussing the mechanism of this reaction um as i done of course having the negative charge the lone pair as well this attack on the positive carbon and which result in the removal of this halide ion and we have basically alkyl azide group this is also an example of sn2 reaction now this alkyl azide on reaction with sodium in alcohol or lithium aluminum hydride means a reduction case the result in the removal of nitrogen as well as the addition of hydride and to give you the corresponding alkyl amine 
This is basically how we can synthesize amine from the azide. We have another, we can synthesize primary amine using uh, Gabriel synthesis in which we use basically thalamide in basic medium. Now what happened, base abstract the proton and convert this thalamide into a salt form. This uh, negative charge on nitrogen attack on the alkyl halide we use to synthesize the primary amines and remove the halide ion to give you corresponding an alkyl halide. And uh, then in the further step in this synthesis, we use uh, hydrazine in ethanol as a solvent. Of course, this reaction involved several steps to give this product. Uh, what happened, this hydrazine acted as a nucleophile attack on the carbon center. This uh, pi bond between carbon and oxygen will shift on to the carbon and then go back. And ultimately, after several, several steps, the CN bond will break up and hydrazine will get attached with this carbon. Now in this next step, this terminal amine nitrogen attack on the carbon to give a basically six member heterocyclic ring, which is here, terazine one for dione. And uh, by the way, this uh, lone pair will go back, which result in the removal of this alkyl amine, which is basically our required product of primary amine. We can synthesize primary amine using this by this way. Next, we have basically how we can synthesize uh, the, this is actually a uh, same case of uh, a nitration. And we have studied in previous classes as well that, of course, this is an example of uh, uh, an aromatic thing. If it is phenyl, it's a benzene ring. And for benzene, uh, such it, it's a nucleophilic substitution reaction using nitric acid and sulfuric acid, we have a nitro, uh, here we, uh, if it is benzene, it is nitrobenzene. Upon reduction of nitrobenzene, we have basically an anadine. Now keep remember, aromatic uh, amines can be synthesized by reduction of the corresponding nitro compound. Definitely whatever compound we have in the aromatic compound, we have the corresponding aromatic amine. Here we have basically a general reaction. Of course, if it is a nitrobenzene, we can use for reduction hydrogen, a catalyst like nickel, or any other one. Or we can also use iron in HCl. In the first step and in the second step, a base can be used to give you the corresponding uh, aromatic amine. Here we have the specific example, a nitrobenzene upon reduction giving the aniline. Furthermore, this reduction step can be used to give you basically a selective reduction as well. See in this example, meta dinitrobenzene in presence of hydrogen sulfide in ammonia and ethanol, giving you the selective reduction, one of the nitro group is being reduced to give you the meta nitro energy. Right? Next reaction, we have a synthesis of amines of uh, uh, whether we have primary, secondary, or tertiary amines through reductive amination. Now in this case, uh, we can use aldehyde or ketone by just varying the ammonia or primary amine or secondary amine, if we are using ammonia with corresponding, with aldehyde or ketone, uh, result in the formation of a primary amine. While if we are using aldehyde or ketone with primary amine, we have uh, a product secondary amine. When we are using aldehyde or ketone with uh, secondary amine, we have the product of tertiary amine by this reductive amination method. So I'm not discussing here in detail. Let's see one mechanism. Uh, remaining have the same thing. Let's see we have basically aldehyde or ketone. 
and we are treating with a primary amine, one degree amine. Definitely, if we are treating aldehyde or ketone with one degree amine, the product will be secondary amine. The amine nitrogen lone pair attack as a nickel file on this carbonyl center, bond between carbon and oxygen will be broken. So give this basically hemiaminal. Now this uh, hemiaminal on tautomerization to give you amine by the removal of water molecule from hydrogen here and OH from here will give you the amine. Now these on reduction will give a secondary amine, right? So by this way we can synthesize primary, secondary or tertiary amines using reductive amination. Let's move on further reactions that we can synthesize primary, secondary, or tertiary amines through reduction of nitrile, oxime, and amides. Now, and what are nitrile? When we have a nitrile, the cyano group attached with the alkyl, it is the nitrile. Or we have, uh, what are oxime? When we have C double bond and OH, it is an oxime. This is basically, we can say, when we have the water molecule, between the C triple bond and we have the And of course, we have a very famous the amide structure, C double bond, and O and N, the amine group. This is basically amide group. Now, on reduction with a strong reducing agent like lithium aluminum hydride, we can synthesize one degree or three degree amines, right? Now these are basically three reactions which can use to synthesize the amine. Now here we are discussing only the mechanism of first reaction that is nitrile, that how a nitrile can be converted into one degree amine. Let's see. As I mentioned, this is basically a nucleophilic addition. In first step, when we add basically lithium aluminum hydride. Now what happened? Lithium aluminum hydride, first the lithium uh, make the temporary bond with the nitrogen. And one of the hydride transfer towards the positive center, it means at this carbon. Now this lone pair or we can say the pi bond between carbon and nitrogen will shift on this nitrogen like in this way I showed here, the negative charge and the positive charge. Now here we have the second hydride transfer from this aluminum hydride uh, in this amine salt. When hydride and transfer at this carbon, this lone pair again shift here and uh, on this nitrogen, ultimately the, the lone pair will move on the empty orbital of the aluminum and make the bond between nitrogen and aluminum like in this way. And of course, we have a negative charge in the nitrogen. The last step is basically the hydrolysis of amine derivative. Means this compound or this intermediate which we synthesize uh, upon reaction with water molecule, this negative nitrogen captured the proton from the water molecule to give this intermediate. Uh, further, this lone pair captured the proton from the water molecule. This aluminum will release at the aluminum hydroxide and we have basically ultimately the one degree amine by means of the reduction of the nitrile. Yes. Uh, there's a reduction of nitrile. Now we can synthesize amine by Hoffman rearrangement. Now, in this uh, rearrangement, you can see this general reaction, or we can say not the general one, the main reaction. An unsubstituted amide can be converted to primary amide. This is basically the primary amide. By formal loss of this amide carbon. Now, this arrangement is known as Ho Hoffman rearrangement. This rearrangement also known as Hoffman degradation. Let's see the mechanism. Is mechanism basically a two-step mechanism? In first step, 
uh, amide react with base to give you basically this intermediate and this intermediate on reaction with bromine to give you an bromoamide okay means first step the deprotonation then reaction of the deprotonated amide with bromine to give you an bromoamide now the next step is basically the rearrangement step in which the iso cyanide is formed what happened base again deprotonate uh, uh, the proton from this n bromo amide to give you this intermediate which rearranges and uh, enter uh, intramolecularly how means uh, this alkyl attack on this carbon bromide bromide ion will depart this lone pair will shift here to bond uh, to make a double bond between carbon and nitrogen and then ultimately we have this isocyanide right uh, let's see the final step in final step what happened you can see here uh, upon hydrolysis OH attack on this carbon center and bond between carbon and nitrogen, the weaker bond, the pi bond, electron shift on this nitrogen. And we have this intermediate. And this is a tautomeric form. Now, what happened? This nitrogen rearranges to give you this carbamate ion. Internally, proton shift here and extract the proton from this water molecule to give ultimately the amine. And decarboxylation occur in this carbamate ion. This is how we can synthesize amine from the from this product. Let's see what happened in the Curtius rearrangement. Okay, Hoffman rearrangement and the Curtius. Uh, the main difference is the starting material. In Hoffman, we have basically amide while in Curtius we have the acyl chloride. I'm not discussing in detail, a very short mechanism. In uh, the acyl azide as obtained, like in this way, you can see here the sodium azide react with acyl chloride. This negative charge attack on this carbon, removal of chloride and take place and we have this acyl azide. Now here this rearrangement takes place which result in the uh, loss of nitrogen upon heating and the rearrangement of this alkyl group to give you the isocyanate. This isocyanate has this uh, on uh, uh, reaction with aqua solution or we can on workup to give you amine. Now the, the, the mechanism of this isocyanate to amine is same as, in, as mentioned in the Hoffman rearrangement. Okay, now uh, the synthesis part finished. Now we are on the second part of today's lecture, which is the reactions of amine. These are the reactions we have to be completed in this part. I'm not uh, mentioning the name here, just move on to the reaction side. The first reaction, as I mentioned, that uh, amines behave as a weak base. Uh, when amines react with water, give basically an ammonium ion, alkyl ammonium ion and the aqua sign. This is showing that amines are basically a base. Now further we can confirm that whether amines are base. When we react, especially here we can aryl amine, with HCl we have basically phenyl ammonium chloride. Now this on reaction with sodium hydroxide uh, liberate the free base to give you the aniline, salt and water. This is basically a confirmation reaction just to show the behavior of the aniline as a base or the weak base vice versa. Let's see the next reaction. Amines also react 
by means of the nucleophilic substitution reaction. See here, in this case, that alkyl amine when react with basically alkyl halide to give you substituted alkyl amine, or we can have basically the ammonium salt. See, these are some examples when we react with the uh, ethyl amine with ethyl bromide, we have diethyl amine. Then this react with further ethyl bromide to give you triethyl amine. When this triethyl amine react further with ethyl bromide, we have the quaternary ammonium yeah, of tetra ethyl ammonium bromide. Uh, this is showing that uh, generally amines uh, uh, occur the nucleophilic substitution reaction. Another part that amines lone pair can also make a carbon nucleophilic by the resonance. See, means uh, see this is the amine. Now this lone pair when shift on this carbon, now uh, this pi electron behave as a nucleophile, or we can say this carbon now is basically a nucleophile which abstract a nucleophile and result in the living group. Now, uh, this reaction also disturbing the aromaticity. This living group extracts the proton to give you basically a substituted aromatic amine. We have next reaction. It amines also oxidizes to give you amine oxide. I am not discussing the mechanism of this reaction. Just see when primary and secondary amine undergoes an oxidation, we have some useful product. Sometimes we have the side product, but when we react tertiary amines, uh, we have basically a clean and oxidation. See, this is an example of trialkyl amine upon oxidation with the hydrogen peroxide or per acid, we have N or tertiary amine oxide. By this way, oxidation can occur in case of amines. Okay. We have another reaction, the reactions of amines with nitrous acid. Now keep remember, nitrous acid is prepared in situ by reaction of sodium nitride with a strong aqueous acid. I gave here two examples. Like when we treat sodium nitride with HCl, we have the nitrous acid and sodium chloride, or we can treat sodium nitride with sulfuric acid to give you the nitrous acid and the sodium sulfate. Now, this is basically a reacting species which reacts with amines to give you basically a diazonium salt. This diazonium salt is very important topic as well as you have in your third year lecture as well. Now so let's see the general reaction as I mentioned here, when primary amine or any aliphatic amine, this reaction also proceeds in the aromatic amine as well. We will discuss. And uh, aliphatic amine when react with sodium nitride and HX, HX means the acid. Definitely in theta means in the reaction test tube produced the nitrous acid and this nitrous acid will react with uh, aliphatic amines to give you this aliphatic diazonium salt, which is highly unstable. Now this diazonium salt uh, on, uh, uh, will release the nitrogen gas and give you basically alkyl plus the halide. This will go on to give you the alkenes, alcohol, and alkyl halide because this is basically a intermediate and intermediate. See the same reactions when we have basically the aryl amine or primary aryl amine, which is basically ar aromatic. When they react with sodium nitride and acid, definitely in C2 reaction, they produce the nitrous acid and we have arene diazonium salt which is must, much stable as compared to the aliphatic diazonium salt. Now see the mechanism that how this reaction occurred. And here I'm discussing that how basically nitrous acid reacts with the H3O 
and ultimately this produces nitro so on. This is the actual uh, reacting species. This nitrosoin reacts with the one uh, degree aryl amine or alkyl amine to give you this N nitroso ammonium ion. Upon reaction with water molecule, which is basically behaving as a catalyst, abstract this proton because this has the, uh, the positive center and we have this N nitrosoin. Now, upon workup or catalytic addition of the acid, oxygen abstracts the proton to give you this basically intermediate. And this bond will shift here to give this dye as a hydroxide. Now you can see here internally a proton shifting is being occurred. Now what happened here you can see when oxygen abstract the proton leave the conjugate base. This conjugate base abstract the proton and regenerate itself. Okay, and produce this dye as a hydroxide. Now, uh, the same uh, acid you will add, and this acid will uh, basically just giving the proton to this hydroxide and making it as a good leaving group, and we have this protonated intermediate. Now, this protonated, just release the water molecule, we have this uh, arene diazonium ion, and uh, this is, uh, of course, somehow the tartameric form. Uh, this has some more reactions further because this is an important uh, intermediate for further reaction. We are not discussing here. Here, here we just show that how we can synthesize the arene, arene diazonium. These are very famous reaction. As I mentioned in the previous slide, once we synthesize arene diazonium salt, this arene diazonium salt can be treated with a variety of the reagent to give you various compounds. And it was discovered by the Sandmeyer. That's why it is known as Sandmeyer reaction. Now here, if we treat this arene diazonium salt with uh, copper, we have basically a phenol or its phenol derivative when we treat with copper chloride. We have basically aryl benzene, uh, yeah, halobenzene, yeah, haloarene compound when we treat with copper bromide. We have bromoarene compound when we treat with this arene diazonium salt with copper cyanide. We have a cyano arene compound when, when we treat with potassium iodide. We have the iodo arene compound when we treat with the HBF4. And on upon heating, we have the fluorine uh, arene compound, fluorine containing arene compound. When we treat with H3PO2 and water, we have basically a simple aryl compound, the aromatic compound. Let's see in the next slide. Here uh, uh, we have uh, the arene diazonium salt, which was obtained in the previous slide. Can further go the coupling reactions. Now, arene diazonium ion react as an ion with highly reactive aromatic compound such as phenol or aromatic tertiary amines. This reaction, that's why it's known as diazo coupling reaction. And we have this basically a coupled and uh, coupled as a compound. Coupling with phenol occur best in slightly alkaline solution. Here we give an example that alkaline solution produces a phenooxide ion that couples more rapidly. If the solution is too alkaline, the non reactive diazo hydroxide ion is produced. These are basically an example of this reaction. Further, amines can react with sulfonyl chloride. This is basically an addition reaction, right? When I mean react with sulfonyl chloride, HCl removed and we have the addition product, which is known as an substituted sulfonamide. Okay, 
it could be uh, we can change the amine if we have the secondary amine and creating with sulfonyl chloride we may have an anti substituted sulfonamide so we can just change the amine and we can have the different substituted sulfonamide based on the reaction okay we have the next reaction with the hensberg test it is basically used to distinguish between we have whether primary or secondary or tertiary amines right now an amine or a benzene sun sulfonyl chloride are mixed with aqueous potassium hydroxide the reaction is acidified in the second step the result are different depend on the class of amine a benzene sulfonyl um, sulfonamide from a primary amine is soluble in basic solution but precipitate on acidification here you can see when we treat with the primary amine this uh, sulfonyl benzene sulfonyl chloride now just the removal of hcl and we have this uh, Aryl sulfonyl chloride, benzene sulfonyl chloride. Now this proton is acidic proton. When we treat with the base, base abstract the proton and make it water soluble salt. Now upon reaction with again the with the acid, we have water insoluble precip precipitate. In case of when we have the primary amine. Now what happened when we have the secondary amine? Secondary amine forms a precipitate directly, right? Here, in the, in the previous example, um, the precipitate were not made directly. While here, in this case, the precipitate will be formed directly in basic solution. There is no acidic hydrogen in case of when we have the second payment. Why? Because we have the alkyl group. And we have the N and disubstituted sulfur. Sulfonamine. So by this we, we can distinguish this is the second amine. Now what happened if we have a tertiary amine? Tertiary amine will not react to form a sulfonamide, but will dissolve upon acidification. And acidification convert the amine to water soluble aminium salt. By this we we can distinguish between primary, secondary, and tertiary amine using these steps. Next reaction, elimination involving ammonium compound. This is also known as Hoffman elimination. Now what happens, this is a elimination two type reaction, or we can say an E2 type reaction, occurs when quaternary ammonium hydroxide ion is heated. Now keep remember, quaternary ammonium hydroxide ion can be made from a quaternary ammonium halide using silver oxide. We are not discussing here the production of the quaternary ammonium hydroxide. Now, this quaternary ammonium hydroxide upon reaction with the strong base, base will attract the proton to give you corresponding alkene and this uh, ammonium ion will release it as a tertiary ion. And this is the synthesis of the amine as well as the synthesis of alkene. And uh, this is a very famous reaction, the Hoffman product, you know, for the synthesis of amine. This is the uh, actual example in which we use the uh, quaternary ammonium halide and how we can synthesize the quaternary ammonium hydroxide. The next reaction, let's see. The coup elimination. The coup elimination is the last reaction, I think. A tertiary amine oxide will undergo elimination when heated. Of course, we have mm, the production of tertiary amine oxide, which can be made from tertiary amine by, uh, tertiary amine by reaction with the hydrogen peroxide. Now, here, what happened in this reaction? This is again basically a rearrangement. In the first case, this is basically what we have we have tertiary amine. N oxide. Okay. Now there is basically a, a rearrangement as well as the, the internally proton shifting. 
So what happened when this oxide ion abstracts the proton, this bond will shift here and which result in the breakage of this carbon and nitrogen. And we have this NN dimethyl hydroxide ion along with this alkene. Okay, this is the case of basically when we have the aliphatic amine. The same reaction can be occurred in the uh, cyclic alkali structure when we have. Here we have the cyclohexane. Oxygen will extract the proton, which result the shifting or the formation of double bond between these two carbon. Okay, now this bond carbon and nitrogen will break to give you N and dimethyl hydroxide ion along with this alkene. Okay, that's all of today's lecture, the chemistry of amines. Wish you good luck. See you uh, next time.